should this former officer go to prison? Defense attorney Gary Zarola served as co-counsel in a 2009 trial covered by Court TV. Mr. Zarola could join in too since it's a defense request. Zarola was trying to rehabilitate his career after being acquitted of rape charges just a year earlier at the time. He blamed his troubles on hard partying and vowed to change his ways. No more playing hard. It's working hard and the rest I spend time with my family. Zarola enjoyed celebrity status in Boston. He was a former prosecutor, and in 2001, he was named one of People Magazine's most eligible bachelors, featured in glossy magazines like this one, and appeared on Judge Hatchett's show. But his career took a hit when the rape accusations started to pile up. I was, like, really scared. Like, he was, like, trying to take my dress off, and I kept, was, like, crying. In 2008, he was tried and acquitted in cases involving two different women and a third charge in Miami that was dropped. Now, new rape accusations. An indictment issued in 2017 charges Zarola with two counts of rape for allegedly assaulting a woman in November of 2016. According to the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office in Boston, the alleged victim was friends with a woman that Zarola was dating. After a night of bar hopping, the woman went home intoxicated and woke up to find Zarola sexually assaulting her. Zarola was arrested and pleaded not guilty. While out on bond, he was again arrested and charged in 2021 with raping a woman under near identical circumstances. Again, he pleaded not guilty and is awaiting a separate trial on those charges. Back in 2009, Zarola said his past helped his career as a defense attorney. Some people have a negative view towards it, and other people have actually sought me out and called me and said, um, and uh, they, they wanted to hire me. They, in some cases, have said that's exactly why they're calling me, because they know that I know exactly what they're going through. Zarola's attorney, Joseph Krauski, called the allegations paper thin and says his client is being made a target. A target, right, decades later by women who don't know each other, women in different states. This guy has been accused several times but never convicted. Will this happen again is the question. Well, let's go back. Let's take a look at some of the evidence that this jury has to consider. You'll see a bunch of evidence, but you won't see the accuser because... Uh, they shut down the cameras in the courtroom for the accuser, so you won't see or hear what she had to say, but you'll hear the other evidence. What she awoke to was the defendant, Gary Zarola, putting his fingers inside of her vagina. She says she would never kiss Gary Zarola because he's too old, um, and she would never disrespect her friend. But we send a photo of her kissing Gary Zarola together with Colleen. They're both kissing Gary Zarola. She said, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm on my period. What are you doing? The defendant doesn't say anything to her. What he does is he pulls down her scrubs even further, pulls her scrubs down to around her knees, comes up, slides up behind her on the couch, and jams his penis inside of her vagina. He then began to, as she will describe to you, he began to her and continues to her as she says, what are you doing? What the are you doing? Get the off of me. She doesn't admit to anything unless she's cornered and she's caught because her story was Gary Zarola raped her. We expect that the evidence will show that this is a woman who cannot be trusted. This is a woman who only tells the truth when she's caught. I woke up to shaking me. Did she say anything while she was shaking you? Yes. What'd she say? She was very serious and said, get up, we're leaving. Tell us, please, what you said to the defendant um, related to... I said, I heard you tried to hook up with my friend. 
Did the defendant have any response to you? Yes. What did he say? I love that you don't care about anything. What well, was his demeanor or his expression when he said that to you? Thanks. He had like a smirk on his face. The police, Detective Michael Ross and Jeff Cecil, had to call you five or six different times, right? I don't remember. They had to track you down at your work for you to even sit down and have a conversation with them, right? Yeah. They left you voicemail messages before the 19th, right? Yes. You never returned their calls, right? Yes. Is not returning five separate phone calls from the two detectives investigating allegations made by your friend? If you don't call it blowing off, what do you call it? I was scared, traumatized, didn't know what to think. This person I was hanging out with did this to my well, friend. Stop right there. You don't know if Mr. Zarola did anything, do you? No. You're just going off the word of your friend, right? Yes. Patient states she was abruptly woken on the couch around 6 a.m. to, and I quote, blank, fingering me. Um, I clarified that to mean digital vaginal penetration of the patient. This is still un in quotes. I said, what are you doing? I have my period. He pulled my pants down to my knees. He pulled his pants down and started having sex with me, end quote. Um, patient confirms this to mean, and she quoted, his penis was in me, in my vagina. Again, quote, I said, get the f off me. Get the f off me a second time on a louder voice. Patient states he had penetrated her from behind and she did not see a condom. Regarding the patient's general physical appearance and demeanor. The patient was sitting on a bed, dressed in clean clothing, awake and alert, voice clear but soft. You didn't hear anything out of the ordinary, correct? No. You didn't <laughs> see anything out of the ordinary, correct? No. Was sleeping right next to you, right? Yes. You didn't hear any distress at all, well, at any time while you were on that couch, right? No. You never heard say, say, what the are you doing in a tone like that, did you? No. You never heard her say, Gary, get the off of me, did you? No. You never heard her say, what are you doing? I'm on my period, did you? No. Didn't hear her say a thing. No. Let's bring in our think tank, Eklund Mercy, Kirk Nermi, Nima Romani with us. Um, he's been successful before at trial. Uh, Kirk, what are your thoughts? It's, it's, it's been some time since his last case. The, the world around us has changed a little bit. Uh, what do you think? The, the jury, I don't think the jury knows his history. The jury doesn't know about the other accusations. They just know about what they heard inside this courtroom. Right, and that's really going to be the biggest factor here, I think, because in a lot of states, a lot of areas, and, and obviously it was a coup for the defense to keep this stuff out, but evidence like this of modus operandi, of sexual aberration, things of that nature, would be presented to the jury to give context to this, everything that's happening here, as opposed to merely the victim's testimony, and we saw the friend uh, subjected to, to pretty rigorous cross-examination here. So, you know, my fear here, Vinny, is that this could result in an acquittal again, despite all these other allegations, because the jury doesn't know about it and because they're going off this particular testimony you know uh, Nima many times it's a he said she said but this is a she said he said nothing uh, he exercised his constitutional right to remain silent uh, what are what are your thoughts here Nima well, yeah, and that's very different from what he did last time. Last time he took the stand, testified, and that resulted in his acquittal. So I think there's a couple of reasons. First, like Kurt said, the 2016 evidence, that's all been excluded. And the defense probably thinks, hey, if I take the stand, that may open the door. I may say something. So they're taking a very cautious approach, number one. And two, I think they did well enough on cross-examination, at least according to the defense theory of the case, that, hey, we can play this straight up. We can just argue reasonable doubt because we did a good job on cross. We beat up these witnesses. I mean, obviously not physically, but in the courtroom, um, there were some inconsistencies. And frankly, 
I wish that they had testified better because I agree with Kirk. I think the defense has the advantage here, and that's why he asserted his Fifth Amendment privilege. Eklund, is it possible that an innocent man, a factually innocent man, could be accused by different women in different decades and in different states as well and be 100% innocent? Well, if it was after the eligible bachelor list, First of all, I hate those lists and I think that they should come, each person on those lists should come with a criminal history check, a credit check and a psychosexual evaluation. I think that should be mandatory. But if it's after um, something as publicized, you can make that argument that, you know, it's, it, you can make any argument and the way that the defense just dissected every single bit of her testimony, it could be done. All right, we shall see. Closing arguments tomorrow. Think Tank staying with us. Up next. The accused mass murderer from Idaho wants to gag the families of the four University of Idaho students murdered last fall and prevent them from talking about the case. Will the judge sign an order preventing the families from exercising their First Amendment rights?